Now, the second non covalent bond <coughs> is called hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond is a weak interaction, of course, compared to the covalent bond, it's much weaker. <coughs> it's normally formed between a hydrogen, uh, which is electropositive, and that's attached to an electronegative atom of one molecule. And uh, it's just like oxygen or nitrogen. So, hydrogen is involved. And it's forming this hydrogen bond with either oxygen or uh, nitrogen. So if you look at hydrogen, so it's got a unique structure because it's got proton neutrons there and its electron is here, right? Same way here. So when it makes the hydrogen bond, uh, so, so if you look at the structure, so there's that electropositivity here because the neutrons are uh, located on, on this side, uh, but protons are located on this side, proton and neutron, proton and neutron. So the proton gives that electropositivity on this side of the hydrogen, right? And then if you look at oxygen, for example, <coughs> so it's got a bunch of electrons here on this side, okay? So Ox the oxygen is electronegative because of a lot of uh, electrons existing on this side. So if you bring this uh, water molecule, for example, here, 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 multiple, then because of its nature, electropositive nature and electronegative nature, there's a weak hydrogen bond forming because oxygen is electronegative. Hydrogen itself is electropositive, so we are talking about that inter interaction. That's the hydrogen bonds. So we very weak bond between you know this hydrogen and oxygen, or oh, it can be um, nitrogen as well. Okay, so we're talking about that. So molecules have dipole moments, uh, uh, polar molecules. So it's an electropositive polar, electronegative polar. So hydrophilic and water soluble so these polar molecules we call them in other way hydrophilic molecules okay and they behave just like water molecules because water has electronegativity electropositivity that's what dipole means so they mingle mix well with water that's hydrophilic so hydrophilic molecules can easily make hydro hydrogen bonds on the other side molecules do not have dipole they don't have these unequal distribution of protons and electrons, then they do not have this dipole. So we call them nonpolar or hydrophobic. So if they are hydrophobic, nonpolar, they don't have dipole and they do not interact with water. Okay? So just like methane, CH4, they are they are hydrophobic. Okay? So hydrophobic molecules do not form hydrogen bonds. Okay, and then Van der Waals interaction. So that's a very transient interaction that's defined as distance between transient interaction between atoms due to the dipole and circulation of electrons that happens between all types of molecules, polar and nonpolar. See, these electrons and protons, they, especially electrons, are constantly moving. While they are moving, there may be a time when these electrons are cornered on one, one side. And if that... Um, molecule happens to come close to a similar molecule attack constantly moving electrons on this side then transiently they can form this interaction that's a van der Waals interaction okay so it's a polar based interaction okay so it's even weaker than um, hydrogen bond because hydrogen bond is at least a uh, prolonged bond but this is a very transient bond it happens very um, transiently that's what van der Waals interaction is okay and then hydrophobic bond, hydrophobic interaction. So like I said, if your molecule is hydrophobic, okay, they are kind of pushed away from uh, the hydrophilic molecules because hydrophilic molecules, they will actively form hydrogen bonds, right? So these are kind of inactive, kind of passive interaction among hydrophobic molecules. The interaction between nonpolar hydrophobic molecules mostly repulsed by water and hydrophilic molecules therefore they associate among themselves they are very important in protein folding because when proteins are folding together I mean folding is structure hydrophobic amino acids are kind of buried inside because uh, there are water molecules outside 
on the surface of a protein. So since there are so many water molecules, the hydrophobic amino acid will try to move away from water, then where would they go? They can only go into uh, the protein itself. So they are kind of buried inside of the protein. That's the hydrophobic interaction. Even weaker than hydrogen bonds. Okay, hydrophobic interaction. We could find the loss interaction. Weak bonds are basis of enzyme and substrate interaction. Okay, when uh, this is an enzyme with the active set, it binds with the substrate. Okay, those non-covalent bonds are formed like hydrogen bonds or ionic bonds. Okay, so that's the basis of the interaction. That's what it means. So here's a trypsin enzyme binding with a substrate. There's an ionic bond maybe forming there. Okay. And here, the hydrophobic interaction is uh, shown here because this group is hydrophobic binding with the enzyme. So hydrophobic or a bionic interaction happening between the enzyme and the substrate. And weak bonds mediate protein to protein DNA and protein to protein interactions. Okay. So these are happening in the biological system a lot, all the time. Okay. And those non-covalent bonds are the key of these interactions between these molecules. So now you see the um, diagram showing you the DNA molecule at the bottom binding the protein. Okay, so protein is binding its alpha helices going through its major group of DNA molecule here and here, right? So when they do that, normally hydrogen bonds are formed uh, between the bases of the DNA and the amino acid in this uh, alpha helical structure of the protein. Okay. So again, that's the principle between the protein and DNA interaction. And here it shows you protein to protein interaction. Maybe this protein interacts with this protein together. When they do that, again, there may be ionic bond, there may be hydrogen bonds or hydrophobic interactions. They will, they will form between these. So, signal transduction happening inside the cell is mediated by a bunch of protein binding with different proteins. Okay, same thing happening. Gene expression normally mediated by what transcription factor binding on the promoter sequence of the gene. So, transcription factor is a protein binding on the promoter element that's the DNA. Okay, DNA replication again. You know, so enzymes are normally proteins. Okay, like a helicase enzyme binding on the the DNA. So same principle. Repair of the DNA again. Enzymes are protein. You know, repairing DNA. Okay. Recombination of DNA. There are enzymes involved. Very important. And the formation of a high energy covalent bond requires increase in free energy in the molecules. Okay. So unless it's not going to be formed. <clears throat> so that means if you want to increase free energy, you have to provide the energy from outside. That's what it means. So these reactions are coupled with energy releasing reaction. That's where the ener energy is coming from. Normally associated with break uh, breakdown of ATP molecule. So think about Kelvin cycle in photosynthesis. Okay. So photosynthesis, the final product is what? Carbohydrate sugar molecule, right? When you build a sugar molecule, so sugar molecule is made up with a bunch of uh, covalent bonds. So it requires energy to build that that um, glucose molecule. Then where is the energy coming from? So energy is coming from the solar energy, the light energy, photons, and the photon energy go through uh, the electron transport chain. And it's given to NADPH, and the NADPH will carry the energy and given to this Kelvin cycle. Okay, so energy input is required. That's what it means. Chemical reactions releasing free energy do not occur in the absence of a catalyst. An enzyme. So enzyme is needed. So when there is, a, you know, energy release reaction, even, you know, so so you may think the free energy, if if there's a high potential free energy here, and there's low potential free energy there, you think you can have it done spontaneously because energy normally flows from high energy potential to low for, uh, energy potential, right? But Normally, there's always a barrier there. The barrier is so-called activation energy that's required to start this process. And you know, the activation energy is lowered only by a catalyst, enzyme. Enzyme can lower that. How does it do that? By binding with uh, its substrate. 
and then making all those non-covalent bonds. That's the secret of lowering this free energy. Okay? The function of enzyme is to speed up the rate of chemical reaction by lowering the activation energy. That's what I said. Okay, that's what enzymes do. How do they do that? By uh, making all those non-covalent bonds, transient non-covalent bonds. Free energy biomolecules. So the the great bio, uh, biochemical pathway produces small building blocks from larger molecule organic molecules and release uh, significant free energy that will be captured by ATP normally and uh, used in building reaction later on. Okay, um, so yes, if you break down a large molecule there will be all these normal energy release, that's what it means, and those energy will be captured by ATP. Okay. You see this table here with these uh, energy molecules. When these mo molecules are broken down, okay, so you can see uh, the energy is released. 6 kilocalories for more pyrophosphate um, when it's released. Okay. And then nucleo uh, diphosphate, okay, adenosine plus 2 phosphate, and when it becomes AMP with a single monophosphate, there's uh, that amount of energy released, okay, triphosphate, ATP, okay, when it's broken down into ADP or AMP, that much of energy is released each time, and on phosphate again, when that becomes pyruvate and phosphate, release that much of energy, it goes on. Okay, and then high energy bonds in biosynthetic pathway. So biosynthesis meaning you're building large molecules. So construction of large molecules from small building block, you will require input of free energy. Okay, makes sense because you have to form covalent bonds and a lot of chemical bonds. By biosynthesis, many biosynthesis are coupled with breakdown of high energy bonds such as ATP to ADP or ADP to AMP. So the energy required to build in your molecule is normally coming from ATP, and that's what it means. Okay? In coupled reaction, functional groups are exchanged, transferred among molecules by transferase enzyme or hydrolyze enzymes. Normally ATP synthesis or breakdown plays a central role in group transfer. That's what it means. So ATP here, adenosine triphosphate, Okay, that's the key energy carrying molecule. So when it becomes ADP, there's energy release. When it becomes ADP, there's more energy released. And the AMP can come back to a ATP if it can capture energy. So ATP is very important. Activation of amino acid by attachment of AMP. So when you activate a uh, tRNA molecule. So tRNA is a key player in the translation process, if you remember, right? tRNA can recognize codons on the mRNA, and then it brings an amino acid on its 3' prime end. That's what it does. But when the tRNA is charged with an amino acid of special kind, there's an enzyme that does that process, okay? So that conversion is normally, there's ATP involved. ATP is broke down, and then, and then that broken down ATP uh, is attached to an amino acid. So in this case, this amino acid is uh, attached to it um, reverse uh, adenosine phosphate. So AMP is attached there with the amino acid, right? And that uh, structure is allowing attachment of this amino acid onto the tRNA, three terminal, uh, three uh, prime end. That's what is shown. Okay, so AMP. So ATP is becoming AMP. There's energy release. So two uh, fire, fire force bed is used up in this process. So even the activation of tRNA molecule requires energy. That's what it shows. Okay. And finally, nucleic acids are built uh, by nucleotide five uh, triphosphate. So nucleic acid here. So you are making phosphodiester bonds, right? So normally, when those nucleotides come, they come in as form of nucleotide five triphosphate. There are five. Uh, triphosphate, three phosphates involved there as a nucleotide, okay? So they come in and they are added to the tail, three prime end of nucleic acid. That's what it means. So there's a growing nucleic acid and ATP is added. And what happens, you know, the, only the AMP is added and pyrophosphate phosphate that's made, made of two phosphate that's broken up. 
So high energy containing pyrophosphate makes the reaction irreversible because that they have more energy. So it cannot go the other way around. So they don't go back to there and